Hello and welcome back to another new edition of Windows and Current Affairs. And today in uh, Windows and Current Affairs, we're going to be taking a comprehensive look over the role of youth in developmental process. In what way, uh, when we talk about youth, youth have uh, uh, many uh, specters of uh, um, um, uh, transformation when we comes to uh, the role in society, their political role, their social role, their economic role, lots of uh, roles that they could be playing in order to be taking Egypt to a whole new level. Today we also talk about the digital transformation. We talk about entrepreneurship. Of course, um, youth entrepreneurship have been very popular, have been uh, taking uh, its uh, full scale uh, under the Egyptian leadership recently. And we're going to be looking over all those fronts in this edition of Windows and Current Affairs. And we're very delighted to be having uh, with us uh, here engineer Mustafa Mutwali. He is a digital transformation consultant. Uh, good evening, uh, engineer Mutwali. Uh, let's first uh, define uh, the, the entrepreneurship when it comes to youth. Does it make any difference about somebody who have come a long way who is a little bit more elderly and he has gained experience and uh, his entrepreneurship could be much more uh, full of experiences and full of uh, um, uh, some other i mean lessons that he have learned from his past experiences okay in the beginning i'd like to thank you on this great opportunity to be able to uh, share thoughts and ideas regarding such a, uh, an important topic um, we should define such a thing in, uh, called entrepreneurship is um, to differentiate it from traditional business because entrepreneurship is like uh, providing a new type of product or of services to be able to uh, solve a critical problem in the society or around and it could be uh, on a national scale or even globally we are uh, interfacing uh, lots of application that is providing different solutions uh, across the globe mm -hmm. so uh, regarding your uh, question regarding uh, is it better to go for a youth entrepreneurs or elderly people I believe that it's a matter of uh, what solutions you are providing. It's not a matter of uh, age. So I believe that uh, youth is providing acceleration to the, uh, to the process because we are like the fuel that is uh, energizing uh, the full society and the economics. So I believe that whenever there is an opportunity to uh, provide support to youth and young people to provide solutions and products, it will be better for uh, the all over society. And we can notice this uh, in, in New Egypt, as we can say, because since uh, 2016, it's been uh, like um, the year of uh, young people and youth. Uh, uh, and I believe that because uh, the, His Highness uh, Mr. Abdel Fattah Sisi is believing in, in youth, because we are face, f forming like uh, the majority of the society. So now we are enabling uh, young people with educational products and uh, professional training so that they can provide service and products and, and solve problems in the society. Mm. Uh, of course, when we talk about the Egyptian leadership, we could talk about a facilitator and an, a source of empowerment and enforcement for youth. Youth enabling across the government and the country. Of course, as we say, it is enabled. Youth are enabled by the Egyptian leadership. And it's very obvious. Ever since President Abdel Fattah Sisi has set feet into office and he has been uh, doing all what in his might to be able to enable youth sure. into society and uh, to be able to enable youth to fulfill their aspirations and ambitions. Sure. Talk to us about this. Okay. Um, I'd like to link uh, what you have just said uh, regarding um, what knowledge youth uh, are having. It began with having something called EKB, Egyptian Knowledge Bank. Uh, because whenever you are uh, enabling young people, you should educate them well in the beginning. So, mm. and you the, should train them well. Yes, yes. And, and that was a real beginning. And after that, there is another program called NTL, Next Technology next technology leaders this program is providing like um, uh, a free uh, voucher to professional certificates and courses to be able to educate young people in different uh, things like digital marketing and uh, even analytics and things like this uh, they are providing such technologies and facilities to be able to 
um, build the foundation of young people who would be the future leaders. And that's it. This is in, in regards to the educational part. And in regards to uh, on governmental enabling, we can find lots of young uh, people now in the government providing support to governors and to ministers as well because they are having lots of acceleration and ideas that can enable specific topics or uh, complicated problems that is related to technology. Uh, in the beginning, we said that digital transformation and entrepreneurship is having some shared aspects, and that's it. We having like a triangle. We having educational uh, part. We having uh, uh, new technological parts, and then we will find a transformation for the society in terms of the economy, the technology, and even the culture itself. And I believe that uh, whenever you are enabling young people with right tools and um, a very proper educational uh, facilities, I believe they will accelerate uh, the economy. And now mm. we can find lots of new uh, communities here in Egypt uh, called uh, the um, um, startup community where you can find lots of young people gathering um, different uh, individuals um, having shared uh, visions and then they can provide an idea or a product that could be solving a problem in the society. And I believe that uh, more enabling for young people will provide more economic progress for Egypt all over. Mm. Uh, talk to us about uh, how President Abdel Fattah Sisi and the Egyptian leadership uh, has been providing, uh, uh, I mean, facilities like uh, training facilities, being provided sponsorship of new creative ideas. Of course, as we all know, uh, the Youth World Forum and the Youth uh, National Forum also are among those uh, sources of empowerment and enforcement uh, for youth and also other projects that are uh, by assigning uh, governmental authorities to be able to uh, um, execute projects that would enforce okay. youth. What are they? Okay, we can and how is that being taken? Okay, we can uh, refer to an example in society uh, regarding MCIT, Ministry of Information and Technology. Uh, they are providing like master's uh, master uh, degree, uh, like a scholarship from um, uh, different um, uh, foreigner uh, universities like Ohio University in USA and uh, it's a, a specialization in artificial intelligence and big data and things like this. Technically, what are these technologies? They are enabling the future of economics and countries. So, uh, uh, His Highness President Fatah Sisi uh, believed that if we provided such a support to young people, so with this scholarship, you can have a master degree from um, an international university or whatsoever, and then you can provide and add value to the economy. This is uh, from one aspect to the governmental activities. And regarding the financial facilities even being provided, you are having like uh, facilities from banks for uh, small and medium enterprises prizes and uh, startup community mm -hmm. such as uh, a lots of incub incubation in lots of banks they are providing training and facilities in financial sectors and even mentoring so that whenever you are having a group of people that is having a very solid idea they can have fun and uh, I believe that Egypt and uh, UAE and, and, and Middle East are being of the two most uh, gathering uh, countries for young people and entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurs in general and you can even pr uh, have lots of reports s talking about this. Um, we can say that any country needs to accelerate its economy and, and progress all over. Uh, they must provide proper analytics to what, what um, power we have. Here in Egypt, we have a manpower, a very available manpower. And even as I'm telling you, 60% of the people here in Egypt are being um, uh, young people and even we are not speaking about entrepreneurs in, in terms of technological aspects only. We can take care of handicrafts, for example, so that we can enable other people that is not well educated and providing them with things related to e-commerce, for example. E-commerce is one of the emerging things worldwide. Uh, we can have Amazon and so, for example, that is being acquired by Amazon uh, as an indicator that we should provide support to whomever is being able to provide a service or a product and regarding e-commerce for example uh, the country now is is trying to make partnership uh, between uh, Egyptian post uh, office uh, and authorities and between uh, one of the market leader in the e-commerce platform say they can market uh, goods and things being handicrafted here in Egypt and this is like 
a full integration vision. You cannot say that what is the support to young people uh, in, in one aspect regardless of the other aspects. It's like a single vision being break, uh, broke down to single phases and um, uh, modules, for example, and it would be like modular upgrade to the society and um, the communities. And regarding COVID-19, uh, I can refer to something that uh, in COVID-19 era now, you are being accelerating um, uh, new businesses. And we can say that some businesses being affected badly and they lost uh, lots of businesses, still there would be like opportunities to others. I can refer to an example in educational sector here in Egypt. Um, this may be a, a, a way a little bit regarding the entrepreneurs, but it, it, um, it show light on how to make uh, best use of the opportunities and threats even. Dr. Tariq Shaw is being um, benefiting from uh, the COVID-19 era because he is accelerating his digital transformation for the Ministry of Education. And you can find lots of resources being provided so that it's a matter of uh, a vision. Uh, while you need to accelerate your business or providing a new idea, you should analyze the market all around you and identify where are the opportunities to be able to provide the right solution for such a threat. So in COVID-19, we have lots of, of sectors being flourishing and increasing, like uh, the medical face masks, for example. And you can provide the solution that is being delivering these face masks on demand so that you don't need to go to the pharmacy. And even the medical sector itself is being accelerated too much because um, there is a product, I, I don't need to mention its name, it's an Egyptian startup that is being increasing uh, in its services to reserve appointments with, with doctors mm. and, and uh, laboratories and things like this. And even they are uh, adding a new service that you can request things from a pharmacy. You just, you don't need even to install an application so that you can log into the portal and even without a login, just access the portal and then you can either to take a photo of your um, a recipe or whatever, uh, the, the, the brochure itself, you need this medicine and this uh, medical things, and then you will upload it and they will provide it within 30 minutes and without even having any contact with you. And if you know the exact names of this medicine, you can just write it and put your location and then they mm. provide you. So I can summarize and wrap up that um, as bears the current state of a country, you should be able to provide solutions and services. And even if you are having a craft, you should develop it as per the things we are talking about. Right. Let me stop here and we are going to continue with this very, very important part after this short break. So stay okay. with us. You could. As we are back to you, we are very delighted to st be still having live with us here in the studio. Engineer Mustafa Mtuali is a digital transformation consultant. And we were talking about the handicrafts. Mm -hmm. Can we digitalize also handicrafts? I mean, uh, you have talked about youth with their brilliant ideas and outstanding initiatives uh, like uh, even uh, um, uh, invading a sphere or a medium or a circle like uh, handicrafts or uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. And w this is where when we took the yes, break. Sure, I believe that uh, digitalization of any business is, is, is not far nowadays. So regarding handicrafts, it's, it's a matter of um, being able to know the exact duration to produce a, a handicraft because handicraft is taking too much time to be done with care because it, you, as a, an individual, uh, you can do something in a certain duration of time. So I believe that if you could analyze what do you need in, in terms of material, design and facility or workshops, and then you can make an estimation for for example, I need 100 pieces of a certain product. So you can make an estimate or a school even to provide um, uh, acceleration for production. And then you can link those people to a marketing company, a startup that is working in marketing. And they can provide uh, tweaks for the photo photographing or video shooting for these products. And after that, you can link another startup for uh, e-commerce platform that is providing a tool like Sue.com, for example, to be able to sell these products. Mm, and to market this, yes, these products. And, and then you are linking to another startup that you can make um, 
a, a, a financial consultant to make economics of this cycle. And after that, you can link another um, startup for logistics and delivery and things like this. And you can have a, um, a, like a fifth startup for a call center service and things like this. So whenever you are uh, targeting any business, you can find five to six startups that is specialized in a specific thing. And they all could be linked all together and provide the full solution to the customer. So for handicrafts, I believe yes. And um, uh, Ministry of, uh, of um, Industry, I believe that is providing such a support to build a, a digital uh, hub for offering and showing these products to others. And even it, pr it could be providing uh, foreign currency, because our hard currency, because whenever there is a tourist, he needs to purchase something like this for Tutankhamun or whatever um, um, arts we have. So I believe it would be providing proper support to the locals here in Egypt and even abroad. And they, we can request uh, lots of things like this. Mm. That's very good. But also, in order to prepare our youth to be the future entrepreneurs, they're already uh, very qualified entrepreneurs, uh, but, but they need to be founded on a very solid scale, mm -hmm. like from the early beginnings. Uh, sure, mm. I, I believe... I mean, the early you, uh, years at school and things like that. Okay. Uh, let's talk about that being an entrepreneur is, is you, you should be uh, different than others from the beginning because mm. you should have a vision. N not all the people are, are having the capability to be a, an entrepreneur. You should have a vision somehow and then you can um, um, have much more studies and then you can decide on, okay, while I having this vision and these studies, I can go for the market with this type of product and services. And you should be distinguished rather than others. It's not a matter of having uh, like a liquid money and you can establish a startup. That's not an entrepreneur. Uh, you, you should be able to provide a different type of services and being innovative. So whenever you are an entrepreneur, either to be traditional or an innovative one. And I believe that whenever you discover the real need of your um, small um, entities around you, you can grow. And even you should have a growth uh, marketing, or sorry, you, you should have a growth plan, what you are uh, um, aiming at, what you uh, are willing to reach. And regarding studies, um, on my days, I didn't study computer skills, for example, rather than in secondary schools. Nowadays, they are studying uh, these skills uh, on, uh, on primary and preparatory schools. Mm. And being um, projected to such technologies is like having a new window uh, to the wall. Because through the internet and technological applications, you could know and learn. You have lots of learning resources and you should uh, learn how to link things together. It's not a, like a separate uh, methodology. No, you should link what you know in physics, for example, in providing a new service. Um, that's it. You should link what you know in technology and, and computer science and things like this to uh, another type of services because whenever you are providing a new type of product or a service, you should have like a, a mobile application or a website or even providing a technological solution that could resolve a problem. So. Uh, our kids and young people should now concentrate on uh, providing educational resources to their kids. No one should be affected by having just uh, YouTube for, uh, for being, having fun or just uh, to waste time. There should be like a balance from homes. And I believe that it's not the role only of a country or a school. It should be a role of the family. Because uh, whenever a school or a country is doing things and the family is wasting these efforts, we cannot reach any, any location. We should mm. have like an integration between school and the country and even the family itself. So mm. you should push your uh, kids and your uh, children towards um, a, a new era that you should do things to earn money. You are not going to be an employee, for example. You should do things and be distinguished to even uh, um, save your uh, current uh, vac vacancy or you, you should uh, save your current position in a company. So you should be distinguished and things like this. How can we implant this? How can we teach our kids to be so? Okay, um, an entrepreneur and even a kid should uh, know uh, the value of time. If you are not making best use of your time, you wouldn't reach anything. So uh, a family should start to um, let their kids, uh, kids 
to the, divide their time and make a schedule. It's not like a very aggressive one, but you should, okay, you are studying for one hour and having 10 minutes for a break. And this is healthy, by the way. You should have um, like um, um, 30 minutes on, on a mobile, but divide it 10 minutes by each one hour. So you, you should l teach your kids and children how to make best use of their time, how to make diversification. Whenever you are being projected to different sources of information and knowledge and not the same type of knowledge or even uh, entertainment, that would be better for the health and the mind of their uh, children. And even you should try to teach them uh, different types of arts like drawing and music if you can. If you mm -hmm. can't, at least uh, prevent them from hearing not um, uh, proper things. It's, um, we can say that entrepreneurship is like uh, a lifestyle. Whenever you are having a new type of service, you should refer to the quality of service. For example, with my kids, I can say, uh, okay, this place is like too much crowded. Uh, we should do this and that to improve the process. For example, we visited the pyramids once with my kids and we found that um, uh, too, too um, crowded at the ticket uh, office. So we suggested something. Why uh, does the tickets not being reserved online or even mm. reserved away from this location? So that whenever I'm going to the pyramids itself, it would be easy to go there. Why I should be in very crowded place while I'm just accessing? That's it. Things like this, you should enable and, and show light on different things around you. You should say, okay, this queuing system in a bank is nice, but we can do this in a better way while having a remote queuing system. And by the way, there's lots of... Um, two to three companies here in Egypt is being providing something like Dory. Uh, this is like a small young people providing a, a startup to reserve your, uh, your, uh, your queue, um, we can say. Your turn in yes, the queue? Yes, 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 that's it. How is that? How can that it's be It's like done? a mobile application with having a, a contract with this bank and they can say reserve to the nearest bank for you you will show on the map uh, where is the nearest uh, uh, bank and the bank is providing information to the application okay my queue currently is free you can reserve or even while you are reserving they are suggesting the proper time where you can go uh, to that uh, location and that's it they are uh, fixing the um, the problems and issues in the society and it's a very nice application but needs much much more announcement and support so it could be used in the governmental entities by the way so that uh, regarding you are going to a governmental entity or authority you can reserve your turn so whenever you are going to this location you will go on time like a doctor you will go on time and have your service and then go away again we can say that entrepreneurship is like analyzing everything all around you and providing where are the opportunities and how to turn threats to another opportunity mm. that's very good what do you think the challenges that are meeting the future entrepreneurs i believe that um, it's like the economic disrupts and things like this uh, like the covid 19 nowadays is not uh, a very well situation for lots of entrepreneurs because they are losing money and the operational cost even being increased. But I think that whenever uh, you are having like a risk plan, any entrepreneur should have like uh, risk factors and risk plans. What shall I do if this and that happen? Uh, they should analyze what is uh, their cash flow and how they are having or generating money. They should know how to manage their recurring payments, for example, and operational costs, so that uh, on a certain uh, level, we should do this or, th or do that, as per the situation. And I believe that um, uh, they should invest in different things. For example, I'm providing this type of services and ha I'm having uh, lots of revenues. And, and, and instead of expansion, uh, expanding in, in a certain level, they can invest, for example, in the stock or even in um, having like uh, assets, for example, to be able to um, uh, liquidify these assets uh, one day and then having these recurring payments, things like this. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, it depends on the industry itself because each industry is having different difficulties, but all over are related to the financing. Mm. Right. Let's talk about uh, the training and the global training agencies and facilities. Do you think that Egypt is qualified enough to have or um, having a, a certain uh, certified uh, uh, global training services and uh, centers? Sure. We have plenty of them over here, especially 
in the past uh, 10 years um, sure. or, or six years. Uh, we have come a long way. Um, we are in, in the area of globalization nowadays, so you can even be certified online. You don't need to build a, a certification center like all days to have your own certificate. Being online and over the internet, you could be certified at home even. Uh, um, Egypt is very uh, distinguished in this era, in, in the era of in the part of uh, certification and even in the outsourcing services. There would be like a um, different aspect. Egypt is, is, is very distinguished in providing uh, outsourcing IT services. This is why, because they are having lots of people that are trained and well certified in different categorizations. And even uh, companies, international companies like Huawei, for example, and Microsoft, are being opening lots of certification centers and training centers here in Egypt because they know that um, Egypt is one of the market leaders in the MENA for the part of outsourcing or providing uh, remote support and things like this. So they are investing in educating people here because they can outsource our services to other regions uh, across the, glo the globe. And even we have like um, the R&D center for a specific uh, uh, company uh, called Valeo that is working in specific parts for the cars, for the managing uh, software of a car, for example. The R&D center globally is here located in Egypt. And even, for example, for certain accounts like Orange and the Vodafone, it's not, not an, an announcement, but they are providing support services to users across the globe, um, in, in France or whatsoever, or even in different countries in, in, uh, in North Africa. So. Training and being certified is completing each other to be able to provide a service. And this is, 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 is far away from entrepreneurs, but entrepreneurs should focus on business certification, for example, from different uh, universities or colleges that is providing certification in what is marketing, what is sales, what is general manager management, because this will enable them to establish a healthy environment for their startup and they should implant their philosophy for the product and for the teamwork. And we are having lots of people that is, uh, their software and startup is being expanded too much and even they are having now like headquarters in, in UAE. And I believe that uh, providing the headquarters in UAE uh, refers or show the light on, on um, the laws here. We should have a different view on the law, on the investment itself, and how to accelerate people not only by training, but by the law itself. Because mm. it may be difficult nowadays to establish a company or even to change its type. Um, um, lots of my friends, whenever they are uh, establishing a new startup legally, it will take two to three days. But whenever they are trying to change its type from another, from a, a legal entity to another legal entity, it takes uh, lots of time and effort and even for cost. I believe that if we have a single portal for establishing companies and changing the type of the company, it would be better. And I hope that uh, uh, the officials here in Egypt concentrate on providing digital services for establishing companies and, and financing companies rather than going to the governmental entities or offices because it's consuming time and it would be complicated. So you should like update the law, providing better executive um, uh, regulations and things like this, and even providing a portal to be able to link all of this uh, for the startup community itself. Exactly, and this is what is happening, whether we like it or no, the COVID-19 have come and have speeded up a rapid uh, transformation, digital transformation, when it comes to e-banking, when it comes to uh, distance learning and uh, even digital uh, learning and uh, other um, fronts of uh, a digital transformation. Um, it was not our decision, but it was a good opportunity so that we could speed up. Okay, uh, sure. digital, digitalizing our lives. How do you assess that process uh, okay. with the COVID-19, especially that we're going through a second, um, um, a, a mean wave, let me not say a, var a variant, because variant mm -hmm. is, a, is a big word. Uh -huh. So let me just uh, shrink it to a wave. As we are going through a second wave, how do you assess? We pretty became um, used to digitalizing our lives. It's nothing new. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you are talking about is already happening. We are booking things online. We are buying things online, shopping online. We are digit digitalizing all governmental facilities and services already. Mm -hmm. 
online. Um, be, uh, students are learning online. Mm -hmm. Everything's taking place. Uh, I, I believe that the key is providing uh, a look on the quality of service. Mm. Um, in the era of COVID-19, we should focus on accelerating the increase of quality of service because if you are depending on digital services while they are not uh, with a, a proper quality, it would be a, a risk for having uh, like a damage in life on processes and things like this. This is one thing. The other thing is like, uh, we can make a focus group from the very talented high-tech people here in Egypt and providing acceleration programs to the government itself. So we can make like a focus group from talented people, different uh, sectors and industries, and we can provide them like a think tank. So we, whenever there is a problem or things that is complicated, we can provide that uh, problem to this think tank like to have um, R&D, research and development, and provide us with solutions. So I believe that there must be must more enabling for uh, the entrepreneurs to provide solution to the root issues in the government regarding mm. what are these root issues um, it's like a complication in in laws as I'm telling you because mm. uh, whenever you are trying to make a digitization of a service you are confronted with different laws that is not enabling such a thing the integration between uh, governmental entities even I know that currently the Ministry of uh, MCIT itself is trying to resolve these uh, lots of um, inherited issues because it's from a long decades and long years but still we should focus more on the services that is, is interfacing with uh, customers and citizens so that they should be resolved in the beginning and um, let's let's summarize that again in the part of to be able to overcome the next wave of COVID-19 we should focus on what we need to go for we need to make sure of the safety of the basic employees that is operating uh, the administrative uh, um, system and we need to take care of uh, the educational sector because they are having lots of people in this uh, uh, very very uh, critical sector uh, and and uh, I believe that the universities is now is being uh, trying to transform themselves from an old state to another one all of this should be completed with a real think tank for entrepreneurs and for tech people and well-educated young people from different universities so that can provide solutions to the government and accelerate the transformations coming now. Mm. Mm. On that very uh, optimistic note, we'll have to end it here. Engineer Mustafa Mutwali, you are a digital transformation consultant. Thank you so much for Thanks coming to talk to us on okay. uh, Windows and Current Affairs. And I guess uh, this would bring us to the end of this edition of the program. And until we see you again next week, that's a good time. Stay safe.